Artists and Crafts online video, Salvador Dali. Action. Hi, Artists and Crafts families. Today's artist is Salvador Dali. Salvador Dali was a Spanish surrealist. He is known for his bizarre drawings and his surreal works of art. You may recognize the persistence of memory, one of his most famous pieces featuring melting clocks. It's said that the melting clock suggests Einstein's theory that time is relative and not fixed. Dolly was very imaginative and indulged in unusual behavior. Sometimes his behavior caught more attention than his artwork. In Salvador Dolly's artwork, he uses lots of symbolism, and that means different objects that mean things. Two of them are clocks and elephants, and that's what inspired our Play-Doh project today. We are gonna have an artisan craft Play-Doh plating. We're making melting clocks and these elephants with really long legs. Yes. All right, so obviously you'll need Play-Doh. And straws or chopsticks. Mm -hmm. Some kind of roller. You could either use a Play-Doh roller or one from the kitchen. A toothpick. And a Play-Doh knife. This is the only time I approve of using a paper straw. Don't even get me started on it dissolving in my mouth as I drink my iced coffee. A paper straw is a craft supply. I'm all for saving the environment, but when we're drinking a cold beverage, let's use a reusable plastic straw, a metal straw, or how about no straws at all? Paper straws are for crafting, and today we will turn them into our elephant's long legs. I'm going to make my elephant red because I have a friend named Max and he really loves red elephants. So I'm gonna make this for him. So let's see how this turns out. I have not tried it. I told my mom my idea to mix black and white to make gray. Miss Moore to can sit, stretch and fold. Stretch and fold. <laughs> stretch and fold. Oh, I got a nice marble. Mush, mush and then we'll have gray. Okay, to make my elephant, I'm gonna start with a big piece of, like almost the whole thing to make his body. So I want his body to be really big and I just make a big circle. Now, depending on your child, this could be as far as you can go. You could do a big circle and then add the legs and then you have the elephant. But if your child's a little bit older, you can add the head and the ears and I'll show you how to do that next. The fun part is seeing if you can get it to balance. So I'm gonna take it off again just so I can make my full elephant down here and then add the legs when I'm done. So you got his body, which is a circle, a big circle, a big sphere. Circles are just on paper and spheres are like 3D. Yes, and ours is 3D. So then you want a second sphere for his head. Now, if you do have a toothpick, we suggest using that to help keep the head on. You wanna stick it almost all the way through and then add the head. And it kinda of helps it stay on there. If you don't have a toothpick, you could just smush it on there. And I'll show everyone how to make the trunk. And everyone trunk should is. make a little, have a little part to, for the trunk. Yeah. Which I'm gonna show you how to make right now. This is why you will need this. You'll take your play, some of your Play-Doh, put it right here, and you're gonna do this like you would normally do it. But my, the only thing you'll need here is these. So you'll like, so it's already kind of makes it easier to make it like this. And all you have to do is make like a little trunk shape. And then you can add that onto the toothpick. Uh, why do you make the ears, Mom? Oh, that's what I was just gonna make. Thanks for asking. So now I broke off a little piece that's gonna be the tail. I broke off a little piece that's gonna be a trunk and I'm gonna use the rest to make the ears. So I'm gonna make a ball and I'm gonna smush it down. I'm gonna use my roller to make it bigger. So Comrade, did you see I just made it flat and then I kinda cut out two shapes that were like almost a half a circle. 
Does that make sense? And then I'm gonna add them to his head. He's got big ears. Next, the trunk. Okay, so I take my piece of Play-Doh and I put it together in my hands like this. So I like to do this, this is what I call a snake. I like to make it so it, whenever it gets to a certain thickness that I want it to, and then I trim it, because I feel like that's too long. So I'll trim it about here. And then I'll add it to the front of his face and I just kind of smush it on there. Come on, that looks so good. What? I can't believe I made that elephant ear look like that. I know, it looks like a real elephant ear. Does it look like the shape of Africa? Yeah. Because that's what elephant ears look like. Yes. Well, African elephant ears. Um, okay, do you want to give yours a tail? I'm going to give mine a tail. I made the little tail right here. Yeah. Okay, so for my tail, I did the same thing with making the snake, and then I put it on the table, and I just kind of rolled it out a little more so it was thin. I'm gonna use my knife to cut it, and I'm gonna attach it to his butt. Now the moment of truth. Can this thing stand with all that weight? That's the question. Mommy. Nice balancing act. Okay. okay, the moment of truth, I'm gonna add my legs. Kind of fun to like get it balanced and see if it can stand up. Okay, big guy, you could do it. Stand up. All right, to help him stand, Connor, I'm gonna give him some feet. There we go. Okay, now I'm gonna show you how to make Salvador Dali's melting clocks. Melting clocks. Okay, so we have to start out with a circle. If you don't have a circle cookie cutter, this is how we like to make it. Make a simple ball in your hands, right? And then just squish it. Yes. And then I kind of just squish it like a little bit. Now, use your toothpick to make the numbers on the clock. Depending on how your kiddo is, you can always write the numbers or just simply make a line. Next, we got to make the hands of the clock, which are basically like two little arrows. So I'm just going to do my snake and make it thin. So I like to make it look like a little bit of a an arrow. So I just took another piece of the snake. Almost like I was drawing it. Connor just had a great suggestion. He thought it would be better if I used my hands for his clock and his hands for my clock. That way it stood out a little bit more. Nice. So now that we have our clocks, we need to make them melting clocks. So you could do it two ways. We could try to just pull it apart a little bit. Make it look like a little wonky. Like this? Yeah. And then if you could even lay it over your Play-Doh thing. And then the other thing I really like to use is a rolling pin and smush it together. Whoa. Watch it all get disoriented. Whoa. It doesn't even look like a clock anymore, right? To me, this part is the most fun. It kind of reminds me of building a tower with blocks and then knocking it over. Sometimes it's more fun to knock down the tower of blocks than it is to build the tower of blocks. That's how I feel about this. And that's the other fun thing. You could keep doing it over and over again, right? So we're kind of going to flatten it with this, uh -huh. but then we'll go. Oh, I like that. So it looks like it's going to whoop, whoop. Yeah, check this out. That's nice. I like your clock. Thank you. I like your clock. We play Play-Doh every class. Every single class we have, we have about 10 minutes of Play-Doh time because kids love Play-Doh. You could do Play-Doh for hours. All right guys, we hope you like our project today and don't forget, we wanna see what you made. So be sure to tag us on Instagram at Artisan Crafts or send me an email, jack at lovejack.com. Happy creating. Oh, hi friends, I didn't see you there. I finished making my porcupine.